Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lily and I'm a voice teacher and audition prep coach based in Canada. However, what some of you may not know is that I have a background in arts management and arts administration. In my program, we learned about all the various aspects of running a nonprofit arts organization specifically within Canada. One of the courses that interested me the most was our course of arts philanthropy. I found it really interesting how these different arts organizations found really unique and interesting ways to get donors and patrons to support their organization. It seemed like you needed some sort of an edge or something different in order to encourage those donors to support you. In arts organizations, there are many different ways to support what they do, either as a one-time donor, a legacy gift giver, or as a patron. However, I would say that patron programs and arts organizations like theaters, museums, or other live music venues are the most prominent way to give. I've thought a lot about my own background as a voice teacher. There are lots of different voice teachers in my area and sometimes it's like I have to compete in order to get students. However, people don't necessarily choose a voice teacher based on their education or their credentials. A lot of the time they base their decisions on how to choose a teacher based on what is different about this unique teacher as opposed to somebody else. Essentially, what is unique about your approach as opposed to another voice teacher. As artists, we can feel boxed in in what we provide for our clients. A visual artist may feel like they can only get paid through a commissioned art piece. A dancer may feel that they can only get paid for their choreography. A voice teacher like myself may feel like they can only get paid through group workshops or one-on-one -on -one lessons. However, it doesn't need to be like this. A theater doesn't just make their money from selling tickets to their show. They diversify their income. They get money from doing things like selling merchandise, selling recordings to the performances of their shows, on top of their regular patron program, of course. Why can't we as artists, entrepreneurs, teachers, and creators have a similar mindset? Why can't we use something like a patron program in order to diversify our income, but also give us a consistent income stream? Many online creators have been using Patreon, a membership platform which provides content creators with the business tools to run a subscription service. Patreon is formatted in tiers. The higher you go up in the tiers, the more exclusive content that you get from the creator that you're supporting. Artists can use similar methods like these traditional arts organizations do in order to acquire patrons who are invested in their artistic development and success. And they can use some of these methods that these development programs for these arts organizations do, such as the donor cultivation cycle. There are various steps in the donor cultivation cycle, so I'll be walking you through that today. The first step is prospect identification. This is where you need to ask yourself, who is most likely to contribute to my art? There are many ways of figuring this out. See who regularly attends your live shows. See who regularly engages with your online content. These are the kind of people you're gonna want to bring on to your Patreon program. The second step is prospect qualification. Is this a viable prospect? There are some people who will support everything you do, but they will never drop a dime on you and that's okay. These are some good fans to have, but these are ultimately not the people who you're going to be cultivating towards your Patreon. In the traditional world, you would look at the information that you already have access to, stuff that they've already disclosed to you, but you can also look at public information like stock holdings and property ownership. Now the third step's where it really gets good. This is the cultivation step. This is where you give them the experience of what it's like to be a patron. Give them exclusive access to your Patreon for a limited amount of time. This step is designed to further the awareness and the affinity for you in what you do and the need for support. An example of something you could do is give them free access to your Patreon for the first month where you can frequently check in with them, ask them questions about how it's going and if there's anything that you can do to make the experience better. Then we move on to prospect solicitation and that's where you guessed it, you solicit. Assuming that they've enjoyed having access to your Patreon, for example, this may not be such a huge task. However, this could be a challenge. So just make sure that you're asked is in alignment with your patron's interests and their capacity. And the fifth and final step of this cycle is donor stewardship. 
Once you've acquired them as your patron, you've got to continue to show your appreciation. Say thank you in a special way. Some examples that I've personally seen online are adding your patrons' names to the end of your videos, sending them thank you cards in the mail, or even hosting a monthly Q&A Zoom session where they can talk to you, ask questions about How's it going? How is your artistic development beyond what's being shown on the Patreon and much more? This shows your gratitude in a meaningful and memorable way. While you think that this might be the end of the donor cultivation cycle, my prof did talk about an additional step that often gets overlooked, and that is donor renewal. Even though Patreon is a monthly subscription service, there may be the instance where a patron all of a sudden stops their subscription for whatever reason. If you feel like this patron is somebody who could return in the future, it doesn't hurt to ask, how's it going, what's going on, and if they are interested in coming back to support you. I would only look into renewal in this way in extenuating circumstances, like if a patron is somebody who is showing an extra amount of interest and appreciation for what you do and all of a sudden just ends their subscription. Research shows that it can take up to five years for a donor to return, so don't sweat it if they don't return right away. It's important for you as the artist to make them feel valued and cared for. The idea of multiple income streams and diversifying your income is a conversation that keeps on coming up. And it can be challenging to approach this new way of marketing yourself as an artist when you don't have the tools to do so and you've never really been taught. Please keep in mind that this is one way to diversify your income. There are many others, but this is a relatively easy and great way to connect with your supporters while also getting a little extra cash for yourself. In this video, I ultimately wanted to share this information with all of you in case this is something that is of interest to you and you just had no idea where to start. I wanted to apply the education that I've learned through my program to my current work. Even though I'm not running a development program for an arts organization, there is so much crossover from where these organizations get their money for where the artists actually get their money too. Hopefully this video was helpful for you if you are in this new medium and you needed some advice. I'm happy to answer any questions you have down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider giving me a like and even subscribing to the channel if you like this kind of content. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye.